Okay, so as we look at this example here, we're talking about domain and range values for functions. I'm going to give you a couple functions, uh, pictures of functions, and we're going to find out the domain and range values. Okay, so let's take a look at A first. Now the domain we said was all possible values of x, right? So we're looking at all the values from left to right. What are all the possible values? Now in this particular graph, let me just explain that this is a point and the graph ends here. Okay, it does not go up or to the right any further. It stops here. Over here, there is no end. Really, there should be an arrow here. So if you're making a rough sketch of this graph in your notes, put a little arrow there. Now what that means is it goes forever in the up direction and forever in the left direction. So it kind of goes on an angle like that, forever and ever. So that's important. So when we talk about the domain for A, all right, and I'll just move this B out of the way here for now. We're talking about the domain for A. We're talking about all possible X values. So if we look at zero, how far to the right do the X values of all of these points go? Stops right here, right? What is that? That is X equals three, right? So we know that it's less than or equal to three but how far does it go to the left? Where's the left boundary? Well, what did we just talk about here, right? The graph actually continues to the left forever and ever and ever. So it goes this way forever and ever. So the domain would look something like this, right? D equals those funny brackets, the braces. And you would say the x values in the domain would be less than or equal to three okay and then uh, the other thing that you really ought to do as well and I sometimes I'm really strict about this sometimes not but because th this is a solid line all of the values in between you know like every possible x value is considered so you would say this and uh, t tell me if you've ever seen this before x is an element of all real numbers Have we talked about that all real numbers remember not you guys, all real numbers. Integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, real numbers. Okay? All right. This means that it's a solid line, all the points count. But this is sort of just a, an aside. Um, that's semi important. This is the most important. Okay. What about the range now? The range. So the range is all possible y values. Okay? So the y values are, this is the y axis. So we're talking about this. Um, is there a, at least one point that has this as a y value right here? Yep, this point and this point. What about this y value? Yep, this point and this point. Do you notice here that this is the lowest point, this is the minimum point of this graph? So are there any points below this? Nope. This is y equals negative 1. So we have y equals negative 1 and then we have points all the way up and does that stop right here? Where this, because this, this point ends, is that where it stops? Well, it, if you look to the right, it does, but over to the left, remember, this graph continues on forever and ever in the up direction. So all the y values are actually forever and ever up. So all y values greater than or equal to negative 1. So that's what you would put here for the range. Make sure you put y for the range. The y values would be greater than or equal to negative 1. And then of course all the y values belong to the set of all real numbers. Okay? So again, what's most important right now is that you understand how to label this from this graph. Any questions on that right now? Okay? Okay, um, I'm just. I'm actually going to erase this now. I'm going to make some room for this guy over here. Bring this one in. Okay, <coughs> B. So let's take a look at B now. So with B, we're doing the same thing. Domain is all x values. So we see that it starts here, sort of starts, and ends over here. So we need to somehow indicate that we have all of the x values between negative two and positive 2. So this is, how we, this is how we do this for b. Domain equals, do the funny brackets, 
Now you put that, you, you leave some space here and you put an X right here in the middle, okay? And what's going to go over here is the far left boundary for the range you're going to put right here, negative 2. And the far right boundary, if we mean everything in between, you put the far right boundary over here. And then what you do is you say X is greater than or equal to negative 2. So you put in this less than or equal to sign right in here. And X is also at the same time less than or equal to positive 2. And this is how you show that the X values in the domain are between negative 2 and positive 2. So we'll hit this again when we talk about the range, okay? So here's the range. You do the same thing, R, capital R, equals braces, all right? Now, if we look at the graph, the range values go from, this is the lowest point, which is Y equals what? Y equals zero, okay? The X axis is Y equals zero. And then we have range values all the way up to this point right here. What's that? That's two, I think. Yeah, I think I must it up there, but yeah, that's two, okay? So guess what? The range goes from zero, we're going to put the less than or equal to sign, we're going to put y in there because we're talking about the range, less than or equal to sign again, the maximum value would be two. Okay? So how does this read? It reads y is greater than or equal to zero, if you read it this way. At the same time, y is less than or equal to two. Sorry, no sleeping in class. You just stay awake, thank you. Okay, any questions on that? No? Okay. All right. Well, what happens if we have a graph that is not continuous? Like, let's say, just one more example here then. Let's go back up here. And let's take a look at this graph real quick. Okay, domain and range. Let's do domain and range for a graph that is not continuous. Okay, one more example for this one. The world population graph. Okay, world in billions over the years here. For between 1950 and it looks like 1995 or so. So the domain, okay, D equals. Now notice that the points are not connected, so we cannot consider every value in between the values that are stated. So in this case, when we have separate points, we have to list all of the domain values. List. So we start with 1950. And again, we're looking at the, the x-axis here, the domain. We also have 19 what? Uh, 60. Oh yeah, 1960. We have 1970, 1980, 1990, and my mistake, I said 95, it's 2000. Okay? Yeah, 2000. That's the domain. Okay? What's the range here? Well, the domain matched up with the x values of the points. So guess what? The range matches with the y values of the points. And again, <coughs> we have to list them separately because the points are separate. <coughs> okay, so the range is going to be, and we're going to have to make our best guess here, looks like 2.5 billion. Okay. Do you guys know about scientific notation? Have you ever seen that before? How many of you have seen scientific notation before? A couple, two, three of you? Okay, that's not good. Have you not been taught this before? Didn't I teach you this? Yeah, yeah I taught you this, didn't I? Hello? Everybody's sleeping. Okay, 2.5 times 10 to the 9. That means 2, 5 with 8 zeros. Now, is that billions? Let's see. Thousand, uh, thousand, million, billion. Okay, thousands, millions, billions. 
So 2.5 times 10 to the 9, and I'm not going to finish it just for sake of time. You would list them all. 3 million. 3.8, uh, sorry, billion. 3.8 billion. And down over here, 4.5 billion. And then 5.2 billion. And then 6.1 billion, or whatever. So you would list them all. But they have to be separately. So that's different than this uh, method, right? Different than this. <coughs> okay, questions? Questions on that? Domain and range? Very important, domain and range.